Uh, right now, I just took this off of the hood and I'm trying to adjust it. It was completely seized, so I uh, put the torch to it and I'm just at the point where I broke it free. So, got it moving now. Now I can adjust the height of the hood while it's latched on. Alright, so I'm out in the garage. I just did a relative compression test on the CRX and this is what I got. Uh oh, that's not good. Nah, no, I'm just joking. I actually pulled out one of the spark plugs. <laughs> uh, just to kind of get a baseline and make sure everything is lining up. And it looks like it's lining up. So, um, I popped in the spark plug. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a second test. This is, the only reason I'm doing this is, number one, I'm bored. I got nothing else to do. So I'm just in the garage messing around. There's no actual problem with the CRX. And I just realized I've never done a relative compression test on the CRX. So I like, eh, why not, right? And boom, here's the new numbers with all the spark plugs in the engine. I'm actually really happy with this. 100%, 95, 90, and 92. It's not too bad. Not bad at all for a 1991 engine, huh? Pretty good. I'm pretty happy to see this. So that's cool. so I know I'm a slacker <laughs> so this is the rear trailing arm for the CRX so when I did the rear disc brakes on the CRX I did the driver's side but I still have not done the passenger side <laughs> that's how much I've been slacking it's just one of those things where I just keep you know pushing it off and but I have been working on it little by little okay so here's the trailing arm and I'll talk a little bit more about that and here's the actual I don't know what to call this spindle or whatever where the wheel bearing rides on and you can see I've got it completely sandblasted and it is coated in PR 15 just like the other side is and I found this to be very durable and it resists corrosion so you know I am taking the steps I need to to put this uh, rear disc brakes on the passenger side and here goes the trailing arm and the reason why I haven't slapped it on is because I want it nice and clean like I did the first side. So there's a lot of rust everywhere. So all this primer you see, this is everything I've already sandblasted. Okay, and the metal looks great. It looks practically brand new. Sandblasted all the rust off of it. So anything that is not sandblasted, I mean not primered, obviously means I haven't sandblasted it. So all of this still needs to get sandblasted. And basically I'm doing this in between jobs so whenever I'm not working on a car fixing you know other people's cars I come out here and spend a little bit of time trying to get the trailing arm ready so I can put it on the CRX and as you can see uh, first I did this section sandblasting and rust dissolver and I've been trying all kinds of stuff you know and it just turns out that the quickest and fastest more efficient and the best way is just sandblasting uh, there's no way around it. I don't have a tub big enough to put this whole thing in to dip it in like evapor rust or any other type of rust dissolver or anything like that. So yeah, sandblasting it is. Uh, for the past few days I've been fighting with this right here. It had the bolt stuck and broken off inside of the threads and I tried everything. All kinds of heating. I cut a slot in it and I'm trying to screw it out while I turn the, you know, the, like the nut like red hot. And it wouldn't budge so I got out the air hammer and I just completely knocked it off so now there's no nut that's welded on the back side so when, it, when I'm ready to put this on the car it's literally just gonna get the bolt and just put my own nut on the back side instead of uh, the nut that was welded on here so I hope that makes sense you know something similar to this you can see how it's welded on I have one of these right here so when I was editing my last video on you know doing the suspension on the CRX um, while, like I said, while I was editing, I noticed that this nut was, um, it wasn't, it didn't have the stake in it, you know, like the punch of when you set it in place and you hit the stake right there, so the nut doesn't move. It was like over here off to the right, and where it did line up, it didn't have the stake on it, right? And someone who watched the video commented on that, and I'm like, well, that's a good thing because I also noticed it when I was editing. 
And what's funny is just today I'm walking past like a pile of scrap that I got in the garage, right? And I noticed this thing, which is the dust cap for the Cirex. And guess what was sitting inside of it? The washer. It's actually this washer right there. Okay. So not only did I forget to stake this thing down, but I also forgot to put the washer on it. And it's already in there right now. You can see it back there. So I put the washer in place. I torqued the nut down to its proper specs, which on here it said something like 100, 134, 134 foot pounds. And then I went ahead and staked it down as you can see right there. Um, it's just you know stupid things like this i don't know why i didn't do that i think i was in a rush or something or it was getting late and i complete i just forgot to put the washer on it uh, but nothing bad came of it so i have the cap here might as well put it on right i gotta see if i could get a new cap there we go it's all tapped down nice and even um yeah i don't know what's going on with this okay uh it was a new rotor new pads and you can tell that the pad is only making contact on the outside edge. It's funny because I had the same exact issue on my Hyundai Tiburon. Uh, no matter what I did, the pads are only pressing on the outside edge. Um, I don't know what's causing it. Let me see if I can look at the back side. If you look at the back side, the back pad is making good contact. It's, it's contacting the entire rotor. But, but the front, yeah, I don't know what it is. Look at the pad right there. Um, I don't know, it seems like there's more pressure being applied up here towards the top of the pad and not enough down here. Uh, there was a, a shim that goes here on the back of the pad and I even removed that shim thinking it might make a difference and no it did not make a difference. So before anyone comments on there saying that there should be a shim, there was and this is how it was uh, before. So I removed the shim trying to fix this problem and it did not fix it. So. So if you have any advice on this, uh, please let me know. You know what it just dawned on me is that maybe what was causing this is not having that washer on here. Because the nut itself is smaller than the washer. So when you tighten it down, it really only presses like on the inner race of the bearing. It doesn't press on the outer race. So maybe all I was doing was clamping down the inner race of that bearing and it was allowing the hub to move at a weird angle because I noticed that the, the uh, washer pretty much takes up the whole inner diameter of this thing and it like completely fits in there perfectly obviously it was made for it but I noticed that okay so I wonder if my problem with this uh, brake issue was all because I didn't have that washer on hmm so um, Hopefully I didn't cause any real damage to the wheel bearing. Well, ever since I put it on, I don't drive the car. It gets moved around, uh, you know, to different parking spots. But that's about it. But yeah, it's definitely something to think about. Now that I got the washer on there and everything is torqued down to spec, let's see if this kind of clears up right here. More sandblasting done. Uh, nothing crazy, not all of it. I still need to get inside of here a little bit better. But the majority of this face has been sandblasted. So I'm just going to go ahead and like the rest of it, Spray it with some self hatching primer. Alright, so it's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this cure, and I probably won't touch it till tomorrow. So, this part has been sitting in the evapor rust for about two days now, and there was a good amount of rust right here on the threads, and I just ran it through a dye and cleaned that up pretty good. And right now, it's looking decent. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with the Dremel with this little wire wheel to kind of brighten it up. And then I'm going to go ahead and chuck it back in the evapor rust for another day or two. Okay, so I don't know if you guys will be able to tell the difference, but this side I hit with the uh, wire wheel on the Dremel. And this side I haven't. So, uh, I don't know how well it's going to pick up, but it definitely looks uh, cleaner. So, this is all I'm going to do. Just... Uh, Clean it up and chuck it in the evapor rust. Not that it really needs it, but I'm in no rush to put it in the car, so why not? And there she goes. She's looking pretty decent. Some nice wire wheel action and got this thing back in business. But like I said, I'm gonna let it sit in the rust dissolver for another day or so. 
looks pretty good though so i'm happy with the way it turned out and i could finally hold down the spare tire inside the uh the hatch because it just kind of bounces around while i'm driving and here goes the other piece now this had a little bit of corrosion it wasn't actually like rust it just looked like uh I don't know it was white I know it was corrosion though <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, so anyone who's familiar with this knows that these are supposed to be like a gold type of color and it was before I put it in the evaporust but after about two days of sitting in there it, it still came out gold but as soon as you wipe your finger like this you can see the gold just like coming right off and now it has like this tin color to it so I just went ahead and with a paper towel just kind of wiped it all down and now instead of gold it's just like a tin color or oh, inside of here you could actually see what color it used to be see at the bottom so if you don't want this thing to not be discolored don't put it in evapor rust to me i really don't care it's still gonna do its function and it actually looks way cleaner than uh before i put it in there now one problem i was having with the crx initially ever since i got it um was that whenever the car sat for a while like overnight the first time you could you go to turn on the car it would always turn on then stall and then you have to turn the car right back on and then after that no problems and it was very consistent if the car sat for a few hours the very first startup the car would turn off and I didn't want to put this in my video when I was changing the fuel tank because I wasn't sure but now since changing the fuel pump it's been quite some time and I can confirm that that problem doesn't exist anymore so I never really diagnosed it but I'm gonna assume it had something to do with fuel pressure because it's gone ever since I changed the fuel pump it doesn't matter if the car sits for two or three days when I first turn the key it starts up and does not stall anymore so that's a good thing turns right on does not shut off like it used to so uh, it's just another one of those things i did not change the obviously i'm changing the fuel pump because i want to change it but it's nice to see it had a side effect of fixing a problem that the car had as you can see i keep working on this more and more and uh just trying to get as much rust as i can off of it and just priming it as i go so as you can see i'm working on this section right here took off as much as i can like with the wire wheel and stuff and i'm going to chuck it in the sandblaster all of this so far is looking pretty good uh, but now I got this piece off of the engine again and since it's clearance and it fits the manifold I'm going to go ahead and clean off the silicone so I could get everything ready and give it a really good cleaning since I was you know there's gonna be metal shavings all over it and uh, get it ready to go back on the engine it's a good thing I got my new Astro die grinders because this one from Harbor Freight just gave up the ghost on me. I mean, even if you do get it started, it doesn't take much for it. So you could actually hold the whole shaft while you completely press the trigger and it won't move. Yeah, and it's very loud. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Alright, so I'm pretty much done with this. First I went at the mating surfaces where any gasket goes and I used this 3M white disc. It's safe for aluminum. It's not going to remove any material as long as you don't, you know, go ape man on it. Um, so this surface looks nice and clean. There's an actual, you know, O-ring for the water pump. And this side uses silicone. As you can see, it gets the surface nice and clean and flat. And after I was done using this, I took it over to the garden hose and completely got water in every port I could possibly think of. And then I blew it out with some compressed air and then I came at it with the brake parts cleaner and uh, wiped it down and some more compressed air. So at this point I think it's pretty clean. Um, yeah, so looks good to me and it's just about ready to get put back on the engine. All right, so back with this piece, I just pulled it out of the sandblaster. I hit this piece for, or this area right here, and I could see there's still a large chunk of rust right there. So I might get that like with the die grinder or something. Uh, but I also hit this piece or this area in the sandblast cabinet, and as you can see, it looks great. Uh, took care of all the rust that was right here. So this thing is almost completely done. 
Now all of this right here is the factory undercoating from when the car was uh, built. It's one of those things where I see it as like don't fix what ain't broken, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up and we're going to act, we're actually going to primer and paint over the factory undercoating. Um, and as far as the back side, it's looking really good too. There's just a few areas I have to touch up, but everything's looking really good. I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. It's uh, damn near like a brand new part at this point since almost all of it's been sandblasted. So I've got a little bit of a mess here. As you can see I covered up the alternator and I'm just cleaning all the silicone off of the engine. This thing was completely filled with silicone from when you take the, the housing off. Uh, but I used a razor blade, a wire brush, and a lot of brake clean and it feels pretty smooth now it looks pretty good but I'm gonna go ahead and give it one more wipe down with a rag and some brake clean just to make sure everything's okay um, now initially when I first took the housing off I noticed some oil came out of here and I was wondering if that's normal but now that I look a little bit more closely you can see right there that's the oil dipstick it passes right through here and so there's a cavity feeding into it uh, so yeah I would say getting oil inside of here is pretty normal and it's supposed to be like that and just noticed there's another hole right there as you can see it probably bleeds into the timing cover or back into the oil pan so yeah having oil inside of here is pretty normal um, but yeah everything's looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with the way it cleaned up and I could go ahead and put this part back on it all right so this piece is installed it's all torqued down um, yeah cleaned up this surface and this surface and I was ready to put this on right but as I'm handling it to put the the o-ring on it I hear this right so I'm like what the hell is this k-tuned uh, thermostat rattling right so I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with it I look in the back side don't see anything then I finally take this cap off if I get this off with one hand Look what's in here. A bolt. No, this wasn't me. This is my daughter. Yep, this is what I have to deal with. This is why I try to keep any port blocked off or keep a bag over the engine because of stuff like this. So she was in here at one point and she put this bolt inside of here, just like that. That's crazy. <laughs> now I gotta go looking and all of the valves make sure man that ugh, the struggles of having kids all right so let me get this out of here but yeah isn't that crazy thermostat housing is completely torqued down and so is the water pump now as far as the alternator i have the k-tuned updated bracket that i have to install so i'll do that later uh, the intake manifold i just went ahead and installed it simply to cover up the ports uh, where the intake valves are at because of my daughter so you know of course i always put a bag over it but that's how she was able to get to this because the bag doesn't come all the way down to the bottom you know so it kind of leaves this lower half exposed and she's walking by and she sees this and of course she wants to put things inside of there but also i left a throttle body on here again just to plug up the hole on the intake manifold so uh yeah All right, so I gave it the first coat of black spray paint. Uh, nothing crazy, I just wanted to give it the first uh, coat, a real light mist, just to promote good adhesion. And as you can see, it turned out good. I'm not really trying to cover anything at this point. Like I said, just a very light mist coat. And so far, it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it. But I had to move it inside the garage because it actually started to rain. And depending on what the weather looks like later on today, uh, it's going to depend on whether I finish this thing today or not. Alright, so I just decided to uh, go ahead and paint it inside the garage here. And as you can see, it's pretty much all done. Gave it a good heavy douching of spray paint. And I'm happy with it. it turned out pretty good. It looks good. I got 98% of the rust off of it. And I'm happy with it. Once this completely dries, I'm going to let this dry for a day or two. You know, make sure it's completely cured. 
Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and spray with the CRC corrosion inhibitor like I did the other side of the car. So this whole thing is going to get sprayed with this, uh, with this stuff. And it does a great job. So we have, you know, more than one layer of protection from rust. And so far, I looked at the one that's already on the car. It's been on the car for quite some time and it still looks perfect. So I know all of this uh, stuff is protecting the metal. So the paint on the trailing arm is completely cured. It's a few days later. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press in the new hard race bushing. And as you can see, I got everything set up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it some uh, help going in. Tell you what this thing's going in <laughs> this reminded me of hank hill i'll tell you what <laughs> um this side's going in a lot easier than the first side because i actually have this uh this uh bearing press kit or bushing press kit you could see it right there on the floor that thing so the, fir the first time i did this job for the driver's side of the car did not have this kit so I have to try to come up with a way to press in the bearing and you know it starts to go in sideways and all that crap. Alright so the bushing is all pressed in and it may be hard to notice but I have it at a slight angle and that's to accommodate for the car being lowered because if you had it directly uh, centered or just I don't know in line with the rest of the trailing arm that's where the factory right height is but since the car is lowered uh, you want to try to set it off just a just a hair to accommodate for that and you're not stressing the bushing so I hope that makes sense uh, but after having it on a press you could see where it took off some of the paint that I just put on it so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a few more coats of paint nothing crazy just a little touch up basically So it's now the next day and all of the paint is completely cured and the bushing install looks great. You can see when it gets pressed in from this side you want the bushing to pretty much be flush with the trailing arm. So if you look straight from the top you can see it meets up just right there. You don't want to push it in any further than that and this is about how much stick out we have on the back side. So it's looking real good. As you can tell like 90 95% of this arm has been painted except for inside of there you could see Now when I was sandblasting I tried to get inside of there. It's why it looks decent It doesn't look like it's full of rust, but it was hard to get uh, the spray paint inside of there um, So what I'm going to do Is just use the CRC to get inside of there and that's gonna protect it and trust me guys this stuff protects the metal Okay I could even argue that it protects the metal better than the paint does. So just going to give it a good heavy douching of this. Just try to get every angle that I possibly can here. Now once I take care of everything inside of here then I'll go ahead and just spray the entire arm alright so as you can see this whole top surface is nice and shiny it's all been coated and I just really gave it a heavy douching of this stuff just to try to get into as many places as I can and this is not going to be cured until a few hours but like everything else I'm gonna let it sit alright so it's been a few hours and uh, I went ahead and installed the spindle now before I put the spindle on I sprayed uh, between the two mating surfaces the CRC and uh, all the nuts and bolts are in it everything has blue thread locker and it's all torqued down already and after I put on the nuts and bolts I again sprayed everything with some CRC uh, yeah so far everything is looking really good so I wanted to see how this would hold up and on my other spindle I did the same exact thing so the arm is spray paint and the spindle itself is a POR15 and I just did that one small piece because I want to see how it holds up compared to uh, something that's been spray painted.
All right, so I got the whole arm all sprayed down and here's the new wheel bearings. Here's something I found interesting. Okay, so a while back I've already gone ahead and installed the ARP extended studs as you can see. Now look how this wheel bearing goes on. Like normal, right? It just slid on. That's how it should go. Now when I did the driver's side on the CRX, this wheel bearing did not want to go on. I mean, here I am with my dead blow hammer and hitting it to make it go on. I know it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to slide on just how this one did right here. Um, so yeah, I'm surprised that this side went on because the other side was such a pain in the butt to get on. I don't know what was wrong with it, but uh, I'm happy to see that this one went on nice and smooth. So of course, like the other side, I'm not gonna forget. I'm gonna go ahead and put the washer on it right now put the nut on it and go ahead and torque that down all right since I'm trying to keep this ball rolling as far as uh, getting this trailing arm on the car I've had the caliper and the caliper bracket painted for quite some time but I just went ahead and wiped them off I mixed up some clear coat I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, give it a coat of clear Alright, so I'm pretty much done. Use up the little bit of clear coat that I mixed up. Uh, I did not go, oh god, this lighting looks horrible. But I did not go crazy with this with the clear coat. I wasn't trying to make it run or drip or anything like that. I just gave it pretty much what it needed. Um, came out pretty good. I don't see any clear coat dripping off of it. So I'm happy with it. I'm just gonna let everything sit here and just kind of cure just about ready to get put on the car everything's looking pretty good i actually found that i had a brand new nut for this so i went ahead and put that on it's not torqued down yet as you can see new rotor new pads the caliper is completely cured it's safe to handle We just had a crazy thunderstorm come through here. I mean, shit was crazy, okay? Like, it's raining sideways, okay? Um, and unfortunately, a uh, decent sized branch fell off of a tree. It hit the driver's side mirror on the CRX and knocked the mirror off. And as you can see, it's shattered. So now I need a new driver's side mirror for the CRX. But there goes my neighbor's Chrysler 300. So I guess knocking a mirror off of the CRX isn't the worst thing that could happen. Man, thank the gods. Thank you, Tom Cruise, Keanu Reeves. This bolt up here is actually coming out. At first, it did not want to budge. But after giving it a little bit of heat with that bad boy, uh, it started to move and it's actually coming out. So no damage like the other side. We're not going to have to cut into the body or anything. Really happy about this. This is the only bolt I was concerned about. So this side isn't perfect, but it's going way better than the driver's side did. As you saw, I already got the bolt off for now and there it goes to the body. And then the next hurdle was the uh, the brake fitting right here. Now it did round off even using the correct uh, wrench for it, but with a little bit of heat and pulling out the vice grips, I was able to break it free. So it's now free. I don't like that the nut is rounded off but at least for now it's gonna do and I could get it to come off and attach the new line and everything's gonna work good for now but in the future I'm definitely gonna have to come in and fix that because I don't like that it's rounded off but for now it'll do because I'm just trying to get the the rear disc conversion on the car and while I was in here I decided to disassemble the rear strut and that's because this is the first uh, side of the car that I decided to put the struts on when I started doing this whole project. But at this point, I did not have these isolators that go here at the bottom like I showed in one of my other videos. But after I did this one, it's when I decided that I needed to order these. So I did this one and I didn't touch the rest of the car until I got these in stock. So now that I got the other three wheels done, it's time to return to this one. And I could have done it a while ago, but I didn't want to basically do extra work so I knew I was going to be coming in here to change the rear disc or the rear drum brakes so I figured you know I'm just going to do it all at once instead of taking apart the same thing over and over again and there we go got the isolator now installed so that's all four wheels I've installed them on so now I could rest at night <laughs> 
that's been eating me up that this one spring did not have the isolator on it so i'm happy to take care of it now and now we could uh continue with all of this right here i got the part completely off of the car as you can see honestly this rear trailing arm isn't in that bad of a condition there's some surface rust right here but uh overall it's pretty clean honestly this trailing arm is way cleaner than the one I started off with that came with the rear disc brakes that I had to do all the sandblasting. Um, so yeah, it turned out great, but this trailing arm was in way worse condition. Eh, it is what it is. Even this bolt came out without a fight. A little bit of penetrating fluid and an impact gun. Look how clean that is. Original bolt from 91. Looks pretty good, so I'm gonna reuse this bolt. So I got the K-tuned rear tow kit that I've had for quite some time. See, there was the other one right there. And all I'm doing is matching it, up, matching it up to the OEM tow bar to try to get the specifications as close as I can to the OEM one. So as you can see, I just put a bolt in this end and then I started adjusting it until this bolt lined up, which it does now. So now I'm going to go ahead and lock it down right there. And I know when I put this on the car, it's going to be as close as it can to its original length and then it could get adjusted from there whenever we're going for a uh, wheel alignment. There was some good surface rust right here right where the tow arm goes. So I very quickly hit it with the uh, wire wheel to get most of the surface rust off of it. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it with the CRC. Kind of give it a little bit of protection. A little bit on the outside as well. that'll do I've got the tow arm all tightened up and locked in place of where I want it and as you can see I already just started setting it up here on the trailing arm I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt in it and then I could pretty much start uh, slapping this thing on the car okay so every single bolt and nut is in place nothing is uh, torqued down at this moment I want to get the suspension loaded and now it's time to put the new brake hose on it got the brake line on uh, did a quick gravity bleed on the brake line so we got brake fluid coming out of the bleeder valve uh, what else what else I had to find the brackets for the actual brake hose back here those brackets I had them just kind of thrown around the garage it took forever to find them and then to find the nuts and bolts for them was a whole show within itself but it's looking pretty good so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel back on it put the car on the ground and then probably just drive it up on my ramps so I could get underneath the car and start torquing everything down and there it is pretty much everything is torqued down I drove it I put the wheel on drove it up the ramps and I tightened everything back here while it was up on the ramps and then I obviously took the wheel back off again got the car pretty much level and I'm using this floor jack to only lift up this side of the suspension and I went ahead and torqued everything else. Right, so I don't know if I mentioned this uh, previously, but I did end up finding the uh, hardware kit for the brake caliper. You can see I put the centerpiece in and the two shims that go between the bracket and the pads. Also, how I mentioned that I have to order uh, the pin and the clip for the e-brake. It turns out I already have them. So this is going to be the the clip or the pin you can see it right there the retainer clip and here goes the actual pin so sweet so let's go ahead uh, you know what I can't really do I still got more work to do there's a bracket that goes right here that uh, pretty much retains this uh, cable and I do have it but it's completely full of rust in fact I'll just show you guys So here it goes right here, full of rust. So I'm not gonna mess around with this. It's just gonna go right into the sandblaster. Okay, so here goes the part fresh out of the sandblaster. And as you can see, it looks a million times better. It uh, removed that rust very quickly. Now you guys know the process at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and spray with some self etching primer. Let that cure and then we'll spray it with the black spray paint after that. There's no reason to clear coat it. It's just not necessary. <sighs> Alright, so this escalated quickly. <laughs> you can see I have the caliper. It's the caliper I just put on the car on the passenger side. 
Uh, so why is it off for the car and disassembled? Well, because when I took it out for my initial test drive, I was like, yeah, the brakes don't feel all that great. If anything, it feels worse, you know, like the car just doesn't want to stop too well. Um, so I brought it back uh, yesterday and it's now the next day. So I decided to do some testing. I jack up the rear end, uh, take the wheels off and I pump the brake pedal and I get something to hold the brake pedal down and on the driver's side I can't turn the rotor meaning you know the caliper is locking it up it's doing its job but I go over to the passenger side this side and the rotor still sprints, spins freely so that tells me this caliper isn't doing anything and I did notice that when it came time to put the pads and the rotor in here you know how you gotta compress the piston well I had a hell of a time trying to get this piston to even move a little bit to go in and I, I thought it might be an issue but I figured maybe the pressure of the brake fluid might be enough to push it out and get it moving now this caliper uh, came I believe it came with the rear trailing arms right when I bought them so I've had this caliper for over a year well over a year and it's just been sitting so you can imagine uh, the mono let's let's look inside of here you can see the corrosion inside of here and it wasn't letting the piston move so here goes the actual piston you can see the rust right there now this I'm gonna try to clean all this up and put it back together but just seeing this rust right here on uh, on this piston this is basically like the ceiling surface you know this is where that inner o-ring kind of rides on so to see this right here I think it's pretty much a done deal so uh, yeah that sucks but I'm still gonna go ahead uh, try to disassemble it and clean all the rust off of it and put it together and see if it'll work but I've already gone ahead on Rock Auto's website and ordered a new caliper because I don't want to deal with this crap and you know just seeing the rust right here on this uh, ceiling surface it seems kind of sketchy but uh, let's see how it cleans up here's a piston and what I did is I put it on my drill and I used some steel wool with some lubricant as I spun it and used the steel wool to clean it up. Now I know you could still see it but you run your fingernail across it and you can't really feel it too much. You could feel it just a little bit and I think that's the best it's going to get. Um, yeah so you can see all the junk inside of there so I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean out this yeah and then just go from there try to clean out that inside of there honestly I don't I'm not expecting too much out of this but the problem here is now I have the Cirex sitting here and it's kind of disabled which is not good for me because I need to be able to move this car to work on other cars so if anything Trying to get this to work is going to be like a temporary thing just so I could move the CRX around. Right, so now I got the caliper completely taken apart. Here goes the piece that was inside of there. Now even with the square cut seal, the one that actually seals and prevents the fluid from coming out from uh, the piston side. Um, without the seal in the way, if I put the piston in there and try to screw it in, it still feels very rough. So it's actually all the rust that's on the walls right here that's preventing the piston from moving freely. And uh, you know you can see all that corrosion. So um, just like all of the internals of this thing, it's all going in the sandblaster. Um, I did not sandblast this face right here. You want to keep that as smooth as possible. I just did the inside to get all the heavy rust out of it. And then I reassembled it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just go ahead and pull off that little o-ring right there before I sandblast this. Here's where I'm at. As you can see, I sandblasted this part. It's dirty because of my fingerprints on it. But all the rust is off of it. And here goes the bore of the piston. You can see it looks a million times better. A little bit of rust right there, but not too bad. Now on this side, where the emergency brake handle goes, there are like some needle bearings. So I made sure to uh, clean them out real good and get them moving again. And I'm going to have to uh, kind of like repack this with grease before I put it back together. But next thing I want to do is try to push uh, the piston in the bore and see if it slides smoothly now. You can see it goes in freely now. Without a problem, if I stand it up, it should drop all the way down by itself. There it goes. Yeah, it was the rust on the walls that was uh, preventing it from moving. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to clean the hell out of it before I 
put everything back together. I'm pretty much done with the caliper and before if I tried to turn the piston it would pretty much either not want to move at all or it was twisting the whole caliper inside of the vise. So now let's, uh, let's try to move the piston. There you go. With not too much effort the piston is spinning and you can see it's moving out. Yeah, so not too bad. If you go the other way, it goes back in pretty easy. What's your thoughts on this? If it works, should I continue to use it? Or should I just go ahead and uh, just consider it a loss and just throw on a new one that I ordered? I don't know, what if it works? <laughs> so it's either gonna work and it's gonna be epic or like Ozzy Man would say, it's gonna take me to destination <laughs> this paint job is fucked. <laughs> I don't even care about the paint job at this point. I just wanted the caliper to work. Right, so I figured it was way easier to put the new painted bracket on right now while the caliper is off of the car. So it's what I did. And it's ready to go back on the car. And hopefully everything works and we don't have this brake fluid pouring out of everywhere. Everything is reconnected. I went ahead and bled the brake line once again. I even connected the emergency brake cable as you can see right there. The only thing I don't have is a little clip that goes in right here, but that's not a big issue. Could always get that later. Other than that, could put the wheel back on it and take it out for a test drive and cross my fingers that I don't lose my brakes while driving. So the good news is I'm not dead. The brakes are working and there is a noticeable difference. I could actually tell how that one caliper is now contributing because the brakes just seem to feel a lot better on the car. The car is actually stopping a lot harder than it used to. Um, but one thing I have noticed is that the emergency brake isn't working on that one caliper. So even though the cable is pulling to engage the parking brake I'm not getting anything out of it and it's so it's so bad that if the car is jacked up and the parking brake is engaged I could actually just spin the wheel by hand so it's absolutely not doing anything as far as the parking brake so yeah that uh that caliper that I ordered is gonna get go ahead and get thrown on the car as soon as it comes in other than that, the brakes work, so it's good. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end this little series right here. So consider subscribing and thanks for watching.